Well, I don't really have a background in film. I had um, graduated from the University of Illinois at Chicago with a degree in psychology. Um, and so I decided, since UIC didn't really have a film program, I decided to move to LA and just get some experience um, in, in the industry there. I spent about a year and a half um, just working on several independent um, film sets and just sort of getting my feet wet. And that's when I decided that I wanted to come back to Chicago to work on my own film, and that's how The House of Sub began. When I first began the project, I knew that I wanted to tell Andrew's story. Um, this story has been told through several media outlets um, in the form of America's Most Wanted, uh, an awful made-for-TV movie called Bad to the Bone starring all white actors. And it was, it was really a perversion of the story where they really painted Catherine as sort of the femme fatale and, and didn't really concentrate on Andrew's story. And so what I wanted to do with The House of Sa was really tell Andrew's side of the story and let him be the narrator of his own life. So I, you know, as a documentarian, I thought it was my job to at least reach out and see you know, where Catherine was. But when I, when I tried to reach out to her, and when I talked to several of the guards at the prison that she's at, um, they all told me that she's in the psych ward, that she's not really doing too well. And, um, and had she agreed, hypothetically agreed to interview for the film, I don't know ethically if that would have been the right thing to do uh, because the story really revolves around who these people were back when the murder happened and not about who they are today. And so if I were to show Catherine in that light, Ethically, I, I, I don't know if I would have felt the most comfortable with doing that. And so it was sort of a conscious decision to keep her out of the film and really concentrate on Andrew's side of the story. Um, even though we don't see her, we never hear her voice, uh, she still does have this um, overall sense of a very strong presence in the film, even though she's not there. And I thought that that was enough. Um, in terms of my own personal thoughts of Andrew now, um, you know, I, I began my relationship with Andrew as friends and as pen pals. And so I never really had to acknowledge the fact that he had murdered somebody. So when I, when I started on this project, that was one of the personal obstacles that I had to overcome was really the idea of, you know, my friend uh, who waited in the garage for four hours um, in order to kill somebody. And that's something that I really had to grapple with um, throughout, throughout the years. And so. It was, it was sort of a back and forth where I had to put on the filmmaker hat and then I would have to put on the friend hat. And so that was a really interesting struggle that I had. Um, and without my producing team, Jerry and Joe, I really don't think that I would have been able to do it, uh, to tell the story in a fair way. And um, we did our best to, to tell Andrew's side of the story. When I first started making this film, um, I actually never intended on getting into documentary. The reason that I decided to tell the story in a documentary format was just the fact that so many um, media had covered the story already and I felt that the only way to do it justice was to talk to the actual participants and so that's how the documentary came about. Um, so it was sort of this uh, accidental you know, stumbling upon um, of making a documentary. And although I do have a passion for documentaries now after having spent five years making one, um, I wanted to go back to, my, to what I had originally attended to getting into, which was narrative. Um, I really do love narrative form, and that's why I'm currently attending Columbia University, um, getting my MFA in film. But I do still want to pursue documentary filmmaking. It is something that I've become passionate about over the years. And so the next documentary that I would like to develop, which I'm actually working on with Jerry uh, to work on our second feature together, is an animated documentary of revolving around the stories of North Korean refugees and focusing on their experience and their, um, and their struggles inside, inside the country and also their struggles as refugees um, after they've escaped. And so that's something that's in the pipelines right now. The House of So was originally conceived as a feature length documentary and so what we ended up doing was we, after we had compiled a certain amount of footage, um, interview footage, we put together a 13 minute short version of the, uh, the House of Saw, we called it Of Kin and Kind, and we showed it at a few festivals to get more awareness on the topic. We also used that cut for fundraising screenings and to try to raise some money so that we can finish the feature version of it. And so the reason that it took five years was because we all were first time filmmakers and we all were learning as we were going. And so 
so the reasons were twofold. One, we didn't have money. And two, we just didn't have the experience to pull it off um, in one or two years. And so what ended up happening was we were forced to take our time. We were forced to really live with the story and live with the film and the footage in order to put together what is the House of Sun ticket today. And so in a way, we are actually grateful um, for our limitations because it allowed us to, to learn and to make mistakes and have the time to go back and fix those mistakes and really um, take, the t take the care and consideration into making a very delicate story um, in the most compassionate way.